Hey guys, this is Josh with the Update channel, and I got an email asking for me to react to another channel called Interesting Skills. And Interesting Skills is a Pakistani truck shop and equipment truck shop videos. And in general, I don't really watch other diesel videos that often. And so I watched a few of them and I found them pretty interesting. So I said, okay, well, I'll make a react video to it. So I've been a mechanic for 16 years working for Caterpillar here in the US and these are mechanics in Pakistan. Uh, you probably find it interesting. Let's get into it. So dropping off this inline six Nissan diesel engine block here. And one of the more interesting things is you see the, not really the engine itself, but a lot of the trucks in, it seems like India and Pakistan, they paint them in these real elaborate uh, colors and decorations. Uh, personally, I wouldn't paint my own vehicle those, but I find it interesting culturally that they do that. Uh, I guess they pretty much live out of their trucks a lot, so I uh, find that interesting. Uh, looks like they're getting the engine flipped upside down here. They were cleaning off the head. And you can see they're basically doing this just outside in the dirt, but the components seem pretty clean to me. Uh, they seem to at least keep as much contaminants as the situation allows. Uh, out of the engine. Now what they were doing there was putting the cooling piston cooling jets in and now they're putting the uppers uh, for the main bearings in. And you can see that they are tightening the cooling jet bolts with uh, what appears to be a lug nut wrench. And the way they torque them is they just have increasingly bigger guys uh, tighten them. Which of course that's not proper torquing. In fact, uh, you'll You'll, I don't think you'll see a torque wrench in this entire video. So they got their main bearings in. What they're doing now is lubricating the cylinders. Those are getting in there. Looks like they've oiled the uppers on the mains. Looks like they installed their valves. I'll put the crankshaft in now. And another thing you'll notice is they do pretty much everything by hand. Yeah, putting your main bearings in here. And once again, using what appears to be a Lug nut wrench, tighten everything down. Uh, everything does look like the crank's in very good shape though. Uh, I don't see any damage to any of the rod or main journals. They've either been polished or it's a new crankshaft. So putting all your main bearings in. And these are typically main bearings no matter what the manufacturer are numbered there. You can see the number seven there. So obviously that's the rear of the engine. And what he's doing now is the thrust bearings. So that limits the amount of end play that the crankshaft has. Pretty much all engines have those. Some have them incorporated into the main bearing. Some have separate ones. And once again, you're going to see that they are just going to tighten them by hand. So that's what they're doing now. Uh, he's just making sure the main caps are seated. So they have a smaller guy tighten them with this... Uh, Basically just a crowbar with a socket on it. And I the other thing I noticed in these, and then they get the, the really big uh, lug nut wrench out and torque the crap out of these. I don't know, I'm not familiar with this particular engine. I'm not sure what these actually torque to. Um, pretty sure they are probably over torquing these though, but who knows, they could be under or over torquing them. Well, the other things I noticed is, uh, Basically, no one's wearing gloves, no one's wearing safety glasses, uh, pretty much sitting on the floor in the dirt, and they're almost all of them have sandals on, but I don't see them missing any fingers or anything. I think uh, our society over here is a little bit over-safety conscious sometimes, um, and you could see, you know, maybe, maybe wearing sandals around this heavy engine isn't the best idea, but I don't see anyone missing any toes here. Just putting in a freeze plug, appears to be. And this appears to be the rear structure of flywheel housing. And this guy loves silicone. Uh, you'll see in this video, he puts silicone on, I believe, every single gasket joint. Now, is there anything wrong with using silicone on every single gasket joint? Yes and no. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of silicone myself, uh, just because its overuse can actually plug oil ports, coolant ports, it can get in your oil pump pickup. Um, it can actually lead to gaskets leaking if it's overused or there's a lot of reasons not to use silicone. Some gaskets though 
or some installation of gaskets does require you to install some silicone depending on the manufacturer. Uh, I've never seen a manufacturer recommend you use silicone in every single gasket, but you know, this guy is, uh, he looks older than me. He's probably put more engines together than me and he just seems to like it. Um, he's not, doesn't appear that he's using too much silicone. Some people really smear it on. He is putting a very light coat on. And yeah, just tightening up our, or not our, his flywheel housing here. And he's putting the rear main on, rear main seal. Um, pretty sure this is not the correct installer for it, but that's what he's doing anyway. So getting on to the front of the engine here, looks like some of the gears are already installed. Doing the timing cover here and putting in the bolts in. You can see there's silicone on the gasket there. Like I said, he, he really likes silicone. And once again, just installing all the bolts, not gonna be torqued. Uh, these bolts are not as critical that they're not torqued though. Obviously main caps and rod cap bolts, a little more critical that they got torqued. Uh, he's using some sort of speeder handle here. Oh, there it is. There's the uh, lug nut, quote unquote, torque wrench. Tightening them down, and then you got your front rear structures on. So he's doing the water pump here, which is actually um, gonna remove the old gasket. Now he's using the same speeder handle, and some I actually made a video on once. You can tap gaskets off of old, um, old gasket material with a slight hammer, and it typically won't damage anything. This younger guy's actually using what appears to be a piston ring, which is very hard and very sharp to remove all the old gasket material too. Uh, it's round, of course piston rings are round, which probably is not the best thing for removing that, but if you don't have a gasket scraper, that's actually not a bad idea. So getting that prepped, of course, more silicone, and they do have a new gasket. Yeah, you can tell they're definitely reusing this uh, water pump here that was, you can see the impeller was all rusted. Uh, looks like the gasket has is new. And just putting the bolts in, obviously. And not gonna torque them. We got our alternators on. This thing's starting to look like an engine almost. So it appears to be the front motor mounts they're installing here. And you know, like I was saying before, the peripheral stuff not as important that it is or is not torqued. And they're washing the pistons. Obviously, they look like they're reusing the pistons here. Uh, pistons are interesting that the whole uh, hole in the top of them, not round, it appears to be some sort of um, hexagonal shape in them. Uh, looks like, I'm gonna say the water, or not the water pump, looks like the oil pump they're installing here. Could be wrong though. Like I said, I, I have not worked on this particular engine myself. Uh, damper, gonna run that in. Typically, you you'll hit that with an impact unless you can lock it. But you can see one of the guys gonna hold the engine, and they're gonna most likely over torque that bolt significantly. Now I gotta be careful here because that sucker will roll over. See, yeah. One reason you don't want to be wearing sandals if that sucker rolls over on you. And they are just. Looks like they're pouring oil into the, oh, it's the oil pump pickup. Yeah, so they're just getting oil throughout the engine and into the uh, the oil pump there. Got new piston rings, oil control rings, and they're just assembling them. It's a very tedious process. They Everything cleaned up really good. Whatever they're cleaning that in is probably some sort of solvent. Um, no gloves on, of course. That'll just dry your hands out like crazy. And they're just assembling these, ready to go, ready to put them back in the engine. Very, um, you know, for working outside in the dirt, from what I can see in the video, they're keeping everything pretty clean. Now I'm very anxious to see how they're going to compress the piston rings here, because I haven't seen them use really any uh, specialty tooling in the whole video. Oh, I mean, they're actually using a piston ring compressor. It's like a pretty basic version, but it does the trick. Hopefully it does the trick. Because, yeah, I, I can't think of a way without having an actual, some sort of piston ring compressor, you'd be able to compress those piston rings enough without damaging them. And you can actually see a little line on that, 
that rod joint there in the crank. So I'm gonna say this one was, it's probably not a new crank, it's probably been polished. And the, I, I can't stress enough how nervous this makes me that they just, they just tighten the bolts, they don't actually torque them. Especially on something like a, a rod cap bolt or nut here. Um, I mean, if, if one of those breaks, that, that connecting rod's coming out of the side of the engine, and that's, that's bad news. Now you can see that the flywheel there actually had some pretty big cracks in it. Look at that, you can see the, some of the cracks even though they had it sped up there pretty fast. So not, not the best thing to have cracks in your resurfaced uh, flywheel there. So there looks like this is an oil cooler, I'm gonna say, or like I said, I'm, I am, that's the oil cooler. More silicone, of course. That oil cooler definitely looks like it is being reused and has not been replaced. Of course, it's, you know, it's their call. They don't have to do that. Uh, this, act, that actually looks like the uh, oil pump more so than what I thought was the oil pump they were installing earlier. Actually, that probably is the oil pump here they're doing that because that, that's where they are pouring the oil in earlier. This appears to be the air compressor, I'm going to say. Or possibly... It's either an air compressor or it's the uh, fuel pump, but that, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that's the air compressor. And this one actually has an O-ring seal instead of a gasket. I'm gonna say yeah, of course, of course he's gonna use silicone on an O-ring as well. Really, no reason to put a bunch of silicone on an O-ring like that. Um, if you're concerned with an O-ring popping off, they make uh, you could just use. Uh, a thicker grease and it'll hold it in place if you're that concerned with it. So it looks like he's installing the oil pump pickup screen here which will be catching all that excess silicone he's been installing on the engine. Hopefully before sending it into the engine. And just oil pan, nothing special about the oil pan. Of course he put silicone on it. The thing I noticed is they don't seem to really follow any sort of torque procedure. Uh, they just kind of tighten bolts all over the place. Typically on a most items, you're going to start in the center and then work your way out. Um, some things like a head gasket, it's going to be very particular. You're going to want to follow a torque procedure. I'm um, going to guess they're not going to do that on this though, but we'll see. So it looks like they're getting ready to install the head gasket here. Uh, they got quite a bit of oil in the cylinders here. Uh, you, you do want to oil your cylinders before putting the cylinder head on. Probably don't need that much, but it's better than going dry on the, uh, not putting any oil in. Now what he's installing here on the head gasket surface or the deck is something called shellac. And I've heard of gasket shellac, but I've, I've never used it myself. I had to look it up. It's basically like a high tack. Um, you can see shellac there on the, the label. Do you need to use it, unless the manufacturer specifies that you need to use some sort of sealant on the head gasket? No, you don't You don't typically wanna put anything on the head gasket itself. And they're installing the cylinder head here. It's already got the fuel lines and the injectors in it, or nozzles in this case, what it looks like. And you don't, CAT actually uses, um, or they used to use an aviation gasket sealant on the spacer plate shim, but not on the head gasket itself. So, in, my recommendation is don't don't put anything on the head gasket. Now they actually have a wrench here, and they're what they're doing here is installing the head bolts. I'm not sure if these are new or reused. My guess is they're probably reused. Some head bolts you only want to use once. Some you can reuse them with inspection. Oh wow, they're actually using an impact wrench. Uh, it's a corded one. It looks like yeah, an electric impact. And remember what I was saying before, typically you want to follow a head gasket torque procedure. I, I don't know what the actual procedure on this engine is, but I'm going to guess that the way they just installed it is not the head gasket procedure. Because you can see he just started on one end and worked his way down. Typically you're going to start in the center and work your way out. But like I said, I have not built this particular engine before. And you can see he didn't torque them, he just zipped them in. At least using an impact, you're going to get more of a uniform torque than just hand tightening them though. So installing the rocker arms here, using a little impact again. Now it's funny that he ran the head bolts in and he's running these much smaller bolts in that are holding the 
pedestal for the rocker arms in with the same gun because that gun is going to put out about the same amount of torque, but he's using it on much smaller and much larger bolts at the same time. And what I'm wondering is how they're going to set their valve lash if they actually have some feeler gauges to uh, check the valve lash here. Uh, this is a, looks like a, just a high pressure pump. So this is a full mechanical engine then. So this would be similar on a cat engine to like a 3406B or 3306, that type of fuel system. So it looks like the air compa compressor actually times the fuel pump. Okay, so he's actually going back in, hand torquing or trying to on the head bolts. Oh yeah, they are uh, using feeler gauges. Set your valve latch. It's same way I do it, although I do torque them. I'm sure he won't do that, but... Basically all you're doing is setting a specific lash between the valve and the uh, rocker arm there. Oh, you get your, we're gonna, install, we're gonna install the engine. They are moving this heavy engine. This thing probably weighs, I'm gonna guess 1,500, maybe 2,000 pounds in the dirt with a pry bar and a pallet jack. That is some, I gotta give these guys credit for that. And you can see the elaborate paint job once again on the truck, and they're going to throw it in there. Uh, they got it backwards. I'm sure they'll obviously fix that, but uh, the front engine's going to go towards the front of the truck there. I'm sure they're going to flip it. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're doing. 2021 printed on the side of the truck, so this video must be at least not recorded 100 years ago. Of course, there wouldn't be a diesel engine or a truck then if it was 100 years ago. Uh, looks like 20, yeah, 2050 weight they're using there. It's rather thick. Uh, standard size here in the States is a 1540 for size, viscosity. And cab over, yeah, let's see if the sucker fires up. Now, one thing is they, they have fairly loose fitting clothing here. I, you gotta be careful working around anything that spins. So the fan, any, the alternator, anything that's spinning, you don't wanna have loose fitting clothing. Quite a bit of white smoke there. Uh, if that's an initial fire up, that's pretty normal just from the oil in the cylinders. And yeah, seems to uh, seems to run pretty smooth. I don't see any huge oil leaks. Seems like they did an okay job.